like to call to order the seventh regular meeting of the 2018-2019 Common Council. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Attitude is a little thing that makes a big difference. Thank you very much. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? There are nine present. Uh, Rosemary Trester is excused. Please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the approval of uh, the minutes from our last city council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next is the public forum. City Clerk. There is no one this evening. Then we'll move on to uh, resignation. City Attorney. We have one resignation, uh, Dave Sanderson submitting his resignation from the Bid District Board, effective June 18, 2018. Thank you very much. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we have a special presentation. and. Um, uh, it's a special award by the League of Municipalities, and Kurt Watinsky is here to uh, make the presentation. Kurt, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. My name is Kurt Watinsky. I'm Deputy Director of the League of Wisconsin Municipalities, and my main job of the League is to advocate on behalf of cities and villages in the state capital. I'm the main lobbyist for the association. And and your mayor and, and some of your council members are frequently participating in some of our advocacy efforts, and we thank you very much for that. Also want to thank you for the opportunity this evening, and why I'm here is to recognize one of eight municipal champions that uh, the League of Wisconsin Municipalities is recognizing at the end of this most recent legislative session. There are 132 state legislators that make up the Senate and the Assembly within the Wisconsin State Legislature. <coughs> And we looked at factors like which legislators have um, worked with us to introduce legislation and advance legislation that benefits cities and villages overall, and which legislators have worked with us to stop or block legislation that removes powers from cities and villages or removes funding from cities and villages. So on the basis of those criteria and those factors, we looked at all 132 and and eight of them stood out as what we are calling municipal champions. And one of them happens to be a representative that represents the city of Sheboygan, is from Oostburg. Uh, but I want to explain why uh, Representative Terry is, is one of our municipal champions. Terry Kotzma, we went to him early in the session and asked him if he'd be interested in, in introducing and working through the process a piece of legislation that would benefit all communities. This, legislati this legislative idea was recommended by um, a couple of communities, actually, Stevens Point and DeForest, and it changed the uh, limits that currently exist under current law for what type of investments municipalities may enter into when they have cash on hand, right? Previously, communities were limited in the term, the length of a certificate of deposit. It was limited to three years, which didn't make a lot of sense. If a community could get better rates and, and uh, you know, have a wiser use of their investment dollars and a longer CD, why shouldn't they be able to do that? So we went to Representative Kotzma, and he right away said, yeah, this makes sense. This is something I understand. And being a practical person and uh, uh, someone who uh, has lots of respect within his caucus, he immediately took it and ran, introduced the bill, moved it through all the different procedures, got it to the governor, and it was signed into law. That's one example. Another example is he worked with the city of Milwaukee on a bill that we supported as well. The city of Milwaukee was looking for uh, creating some um, requirements, some, some um, standards for allowing third-party individuals to enter into and submit bids on foreclosed properties. It's a big issue in the city of Milwaukee. 
uh, bad landlords were finding the making were were acquiring land through sheriff sales of foreclosed property, and there wasn't anything the city could do. So this piece of legislation that again uh, Representative Kotzma authored with the city of Milwaukee's help introduced and shepherded it through the process was passed into law, and now. Uh, before an individual can just show up at a sheriff's sale and uh, acquire a foreclosed property through, through a bid or an auction, has to meet certain requirements, like they have to be up to speed with their taxes on the properties that they already own. That's just one example. So, so those are two pieces of legislation we worked with him to pass and, and become law. But I also want to mention he was also a key um, supporter and co-sponsor actually signed on to two pieces of legislation that we worked hard on, which eventually did not pass. And these are the dark store legislation and the re reversal of the Walgreens decision. Two bills our association worked hard on. You've probably read about it in our magazine. Uh, has to do with commercial property assessments and some tax loopholes or strategies that we want to close the door on. Representative Kotzmo is one of the legislators that signed on to those bills early on. And in the end, um, and, and we're, we're very grateful for that because it wasn't easy to do because there were, as you, might, uh, as you might know, there was plenty of opposition to those pieces of legislation. I mean, businesses that already um, uh, use those, uh, those uh, tax, we call them tax loopholes, they call them tax strategies, naturally want to keep those and want to maintain the status quo, so there was lots of opposition. But uh, Representative Kotzm understood our perspective and went to bat for us as co-sponsor of those bills. And we'll look to him again next session to see if, ask him to also co-sponsor those bills. Um, so I'd like to call up Representative Kotzma and um, present to him a token of our gratitude for being a municipal champion. This is basically, it's a, it's a clock with his district, his city, uh, Oostburg, centered on inter, inter, basically placed on the, the center of the clock. And so uh, if you'll join me in recognizing uh, Senator Kotzma as a municipal champion. I'm only representing. That's the Senator, sorry. <laughs> Representative Kotzma, sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I imagine he'll want, want to say a few words, Mayor, if that's appropriate. That's perfectly Thank appropriate. You. you know, I just want to say that uh, Terry Kotzma has been uh, great for the city of Sheboygan as well not only when I call or many of you call his office, but he also meets with us on a bi-monthly basis here at City Hall and, uh, and just listens to the concerns of all of our department heads. And we really appreciate the extra effort that he puts in. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me here tonight. And I just want to make two points. First of all, Kurt, uh, the League of Municipalities, as, as you may all know, is, is your, the, primary lobbyists. I don't know what you pay in dues to the League of Municipalities, but early, I'm in my second term, and early when, when I was in my first term, I remember getting visited by Kurt, and I'm thinking, you know, lobbyists can get a bad name sometimes, and, but as representatives, we're supposed to understand all these issues, agriculture and transportation and medical things, and on and on and on. There's no way you can know everything about everything. So I was most impressed when I first met Kurt. He was, he was logical, he was reasonable, and, and, and I thought this is somebody that, that certainly I can rely on, that I can trust. And, and so I wanna, I wanna thank Kurt, and I wanna tell you, the city of Sheboygan, that we are very adequately and very finely uh, represented by Kurt in Madison. He is a well-respected lobbyist. Secondly, uh, it's really an honor for me to receive this award. And a lot of, uh, the, the league will pride themselves on being nonpartisan. And you know, we hear about things, you know, arguments and things we don't get along and all that stuff. Well, you know, this is a great example of it, and I want to explore a little bit more about the, the legislation that we did, or that I did in cooperation with Evan Goyke from, from Milwaukee. He represents the smallest geographic area in the state of Wisconsin. So in other words, the densest population. So there's a lot of problems in, in the city of Milwaukee that yeah, I don't really understand, I don't know about. Well, 
I do know about banking and financial services, so we worked together. He invited me down there. I spent the day. We went to uh, the basement of the sheriff's department where they had foreclosure sales. We went to some boarded up properties, some residential properties that were, that were boarded, some commercial properties, and we worked together on this legislation. It was uh, unanimously passed and, uh, and unanimously came out of the committee. So when you, when you hear about things that uh, arguments and, and, and disagreements, uh, I, I want to tell you again, 90% of the bills that we pass do have bipartisan support, and this is a great example of that. So again, I, I thank you for, for letting me be here tonight, and, and again, it's really an honor and a privilege to represent the city of Sheboygan and a lot of all the good things that are, that are going on here, thanks to, thanks to you. And Mr. Mayor, I appreciate the relationship that we have, and I thank you for that as well. So thank you. Thank you, Terry. Next, we'll move on to uh, mayor's announcements. Um, just want to announce that our, our, our trolley that runs through South Pier, the marina, and downtown will run uh, on the 4th of July from 11 o'clock until 8 p.m. Rides are a dollar for all day. And also want to let you know that Sheboygan Area School District approved the uh, new contract with, the, with our Shoreline Metro and uh, students can now ride free with their ID card, and the school district is picking up the cost of that. Uh, also, the uh, Levitamp concert on the City Green on July 5th is coming up. That'll be from 6 to 9 p.m., and the Pops Band concert is scheduled on Wednesday the 11th, and that starts at 6.30. Uh, we also like to uh, thank our Freedom Fest sponsors, Plenko, Volrath, the two new sponsors, and also Festival Foods, who takes care of the fireworks, and Wisconsin Bacon Trust, who sponsors the parade. So I hope everybody has a great 4th of July. Next, we'll move on to a hearing. Item 2.1 is hearing number 3 of 1819, amending the city of Sheboygan's official zoning map to change the use district classification of vacant land located on North 15th Street, parcel 59281500560 from class urban commercial to class urban residential. Is there anyone here wishing to be heard? Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to close the hearing. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of closing the hearing, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Then we'll move on to the consent agenda, which will include items 3.2 through 3.6. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion. Is there any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? <coughs> Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, item 4.1 is RO number 61 of 1819 by the City Planning Commission. To whom is referred direct referral resolution number 44 of 1819 by our Alderperson Bourne and Donahue, approving the Capital Improvements Program recommended by the Capital Improvements Commission for the program period of 2019 through 2023, and adopting the program for implementation and recommends the approving the resolution. Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The uh, motion is before you. Is there any discussion on the capital improvements program? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll?
Nine ayes. Motion passes. Item 4.2 is RO number 62 of 1819 by the City Planning Commission. Doomers referred General Ordinance number 5 of 1819 by Alderperson Decker and RO number 37 of 1819 by the City Clerk for an application from Richardson Industries Incorporated for a change in the zoning classification of vacant land located on North 15th Street across from 822 North 14th Street. Parcel number 5928150560 from class urban commercial to class urban residential classification recommends the approval of the general ordinance and RO. Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Items 4.3 through 4.9 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, uh, item 5.1 is resolution number 45 of 1819 by all the persons Wolf and Donahue authorizing, executing a certificate that has been requested by the title insurer for the Sloma PAJA Properties LLC ground lease. All the person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to suspend and pass resolution. <clears throat> I second with respect to both motions. Thank you for that uh, motion and support. Is there any discussion on the, the resolution? Seeing none. All those. In Pardon me. Is there any objection to suspension? Thank you. Um, so. We have a motion on the floor. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, I'm sorry, we need to have a roll call on this. Will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is resolution number 46 of 1819 by Alderperson Wolf authorizing entering into an agreement with the Sheboygan Professional Police Officers Supervisory Association for a successor contract. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to suspend. Is there any objection to suspension? Hearing none, please proceed. I would like to also make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The resolution is before us. Any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, Sandy, uh, I've got to find it here on the agreement. Uh, it was under number three, uh, effective uh, 2019, effective the first payroll in January 2019, education credit will transition from a lump sum to an hourly amount uh, in the form of wages per hour, and then it states the, uh, the wages per hour be, because of the bachelor's and master's, a discontinued payout for long courses effective January 19, 2019. Uh, Sandy, my, uh, my question is, what was the uh, thinking on going from the lump sum to the hourly, uh, the hourly uh, wage? And I guess my question is, if it's a lump sum payout, we wouldn't have to pay or we weren't paying WRS on that, where if we go to our hourly wage and increase wages, we, have, we are having to pay into WRS, or don't I have that correct? That's not correct. The lump sum payout does have to uh, uh, be counted towards WRS wages, okay. and any Fair Labor Standards Act overtime must also apply. So this was <clears throat> one of the findings or, or considerations in the class action lawsuit that identified an amount being paid out had to be apl applicable to overtime. Okay. And so by converting it to an hourly rate, it is automatically 
part of their wages for overtime earnings. There is a slight additional cost because now it's applicable to all overtime versus just Fair Labor Standards Act. Thank you. Thank you for that explanation and question. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Items 5.3 and 5.4 will lay over. Items 5.5 through 5.8 will be referred to various committees. Under report of committees, 6.1 is RC number 68 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom is referred resolution number 41 of 1819 by Elder Persons Rindfleisch and Boren authorizing a transfer of an appro appropriations in the 2018 budget and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Rindfleisch. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Uh, item 7.1 will be referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. Uh, next, we'll go on with other matters received after the agenda was published. City Attorney. 8.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various <coughs> license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2018, June 30th, 2019, and June 30th, 2020. That will be referred to the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. Next, we have a contemplated closed session. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion uh, to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in Section 19.885, Sub 1, Sub E, Wisconsin Stats, where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session regarding the, a development opportunity in the South Point Enterprise Campus. Thank you for that motion and support. The clerk, please call the roll for closed session. Nine eyes. Motion passes. We'll take a three minute recess and reconvene. And for our viewers at home, we'll be adjourning in closed session. So, this will be the end of our program for tonight. <laughs>